Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. Um, in this session, we'll be talking about mechanical ventilation in ICU, intensive care units. Uh, this is going to be our first um, lecture series on mechanical vent ventilation in intensive care units. Uh, when I think of um, mechanical ventilator, um, to keep things simple, I normally divide it into two major functions, right? One is it helps with oxygenation. So it provides oxygen to the patient. And then the other part, it helps with ventilation. And when we talk in terms of ventilation, it basically means getting rid, to get rid of um, of your carbon dioxide, right, of your CO2. So if the ventilation is getting rid of carbon dioxide, that means it's safe to say that our ventilation will be inversely proportional to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So that means if I can increase the ventilation, um, I can decrease the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Um, which is in the plasma or in the blood. And if you remember from physiology, we know that our minute ventilation um, is equal to respiratory rate multiplied by the um, tidal volume. So VT is the um, tidal volume. So this similar principle, we can bring it to the ventilator, right? So meaning that if I increase the respiratory rate, I can optimize my ventilation. Or if you go up on the tidal volume, you can also optimize uh, your ventilation. So on the ventilator, two very important things that will help us to optimize ventilation in our patients. So one will be the rate, the mechanical rates, um, which most of the time, some test look, we could represent it as F, right? So F is the same thing as your um, mechanical rate or your, um, which is synonymous to respiratory rate, right? So we can call it respiratory rate or F. Um, and on the mechanical ventilator, um, we normally set the respiratory rate um, anywhere from 10 to um, 35, right? Um, depending on the patient's underlying uh, pathology. So if it's somebody that has obstructive lung disease, whereby they need more time for expiration, you might want to set the rates on the lower side, right? So that they can have more time to exhale. Um, if it's somebody that has a restrictive physiology, whereby you can't put so much uh, volume inside your lungs, then you might need to increase their rates to be able to optimize their um, the ventilation. And of course, you don't want to go beyond uh, more than um, 35 uh, because, especially in adults, um, because if you go beyond that, um, they may not have enough time for exhalation. And as a result of that, um, they can start developing what we call um, intrinsic PEEP, whereby they have buildup of gas in their lungs. And that could cause, in, that could lead to hemodynamic um, instability. Um, the second part that also up with ventilation, like we mentioned earlier, is the tidal volume, right? And uh, based on the studies that have been done, particularly in patients who have um, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, we know that the tidal volume between 6.6 six per kg of ID body weight to HCC per kg of ID body weight um, is considered safe uh, for most of the patient, right? So in between this range, um, it's usually safe uh, when we are initiating uh, mechanical ventil uh, ventilation. And uh, in patients who have um, things like um, ARDS or um, a restrictive physiology um, or pathology, you may want to go towards the CCC per kg of ID body weight. Um, in the patient who have things like um, obstructive lung disease, uh, whereby you want to put them on a lower rate um, to be able to optimize their ventilation, 
you might want to go towards the HCC me package of their ID body weights. And there are a lot of um, um, like a calculation uh, calculator outside there, or a lot a lot of graphs whereby you can easily base on their ID body weight, you can determine um, their tidal volume. And the one I find very awful um, is the um, this MD car, right? So if you have this, um, it's online, so you can just Google MD Cap, um, or you can, if you have the app, you can use the app on your phone. So if you type in um, ET2, so if you type ET2, or if you type in tidal volume, um, so it's going to bring out um, the app for you. So all you have to just input into that, uh, into the app is the height of the patient. So you put in the height, and they put in their um, their gender. So if they are male or female, and then once you've done that, it's going to give you exactly where the E2 tube supposed to be in their teeth, and it's going to give you the range of what their um, tidal volume is supposed to be based on their ID body weight. So I find this um, the MD um, car very helpful in terms of helping me to determine. Um, what is the ID uh, tidal volume um, that you use for uh, for the patient instead of just coming up with some random number? Um, so that's about ventilation. So moving on to the um, oxygenation part. So the first thing, the two things that normally up with oxygenation first is going to be your FiO two, right? And as we know, we know that FiO two is a fraction of inspired air that is oxygen. So how much of those gas that we are breathing in, what fraction of it is oxygen? Um, so that's the FL2. And as we know, when you're on, um, at sea level, we know that the FL2, um, I mean, on room here, if we are not using and if you are not on any oxygen, we know that the FL2 is usually um 21%, right? So 21% is um a normal is usually the normal FL2 in somebody who's not on oxygen, 21%. And then for every one liter of oxygen that you put the patient on, right, that will increase your FL2 by about three um, to four percent. Um so for instance, if you have somebody on um three liter of nasal cannula of oxygen, right? So all you have to do to determine the FL2 for the patient, you just multiply the three liter by three, so that will be nine. And nine plus 21, that will give us 30%. So that means the FL2 for that patient will be around um, 30%, right? And then on the ventilator, the minimal FL2 we normally set is what they do on Lumia, which is 21%, right? And it can go all the way to 100% um, on the mechanical ventilator. So you can set there. So depending on how how bad the hypoxemia of that patient is, right? Um, we can set it all the way to 100%. And of course, once you, it's okay to start with 100% when you are initiating the mechanical ventilator, um, but of course, you want to win it down um, below 60% um, because of risk of um, um, oxygen toxicity. So we want to avoid um, oxygen toxicity in those patients. Um, the next part that also helps with um, oxygenation is our um, PIP, right? Um, PIP. So PIP is positive and respiratory uh, pressure. So I think of PIP as that pressure that is in the lungs at the end of expiration. So that pressure that is going to be there um, at the end of um, exhalation, right? And this pressure is important um, because it prevents the alveolar from collapsing, right? So because that pressure is there when you breathe out, and that's when the alveolar has the high tendency to collapse, right? So the very important of PEEP, one, um, it helps to um, prevent alveolar collapse, right? Um, two, that PEEP also up in recruitment, right? So you have with alveolar recruitment. 
So all those um, athletic area, the area that have collapsed is going to open them up, right? And by doing this, you're actually increasing the surface area uh, for oxygen to easily diffuse through. So that's actually the principle behind PEEP. Um, by giving them PEEP, um, you can increase the surface area and that will easily allow the oxygen to diffuse through and that will help with opti optimization of the um, of the uh, of their hypoxemia, right? Um, other thing that um, other benefit of PEEP is that, um, especially in patients who have obstructive lung disease like COPD exacerbation, like asthma patients, it's going to help you to stent open their airway, right? Especially during expiration, um, during exhalation, uh, because patients who have obstructive lung disease, their issue is prone with expiration, right? Um, so by giving them that PEEP, that will keep the airway open. Uh, during exhalation, and that will improve their work of breathing, right? And also, it's also important to know that PEEP will also help to decrease the uh, your afterload, right? So it helps to decrease the afterload. And this could be very important in patients who have um, cardiogenic shock, uh, particularly maybe acute, uh, acute aortic regurgitation, uh, to be able to decrease um, their afterload um, to help with some offloading of those workload from the uh, from the heart, right? Um, but the so the PEEP we normally set it between um, the minimum PEEP we normally start with five, and it can go all the way to um, to twenty four, um, depending on how bad um, the uh, patient pathology is, right? So like in some patients who have very bad um, acute respiratory, respiratory distress syndrome, you might need a higher PEEP. Um, in those um, patients, depending on the, if you decide to go with the um, IRP um, low FL2 ladder. So depending on which ladder you're going with, um, you might require IRP in those. Um, in and then, but one thing to mention about PEEP is that um, if you put somebody on too much PEEP, it can actually increase their intrathoracic pressure. And that, because of the intrathoracic, increased intrathoracic pressure, that could decrease um, the preload. So in other words, it can decrease their venous return to the heart. And then because of the decreased venous return, decreased preload, that could lead to hypotension. Um, so it's something that to bear in mind, right, in this, uh, in this patient. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, in the subsequent series of our ventilation, our mechanical ventilation in ICU, uh, we're going to be talking about some indications while we put patient on mechanical ventilation. Um, we're also going to talk about some mode of ventilation, um, how we um, troubleshoot um, um, some issues that arises um, from mechanical uh, ventilation. And then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.